Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Awesome Finds. Now I got a bunch of eclectic records, some old, some new, so let's begin with a gift. Now, one of my best friends here in LA is moving out of state. In fact, he's moving across the country, which means I won't really get to see him as much as I used to, which is sad, but I'm very happy for him and his wife because they are starting the next chapter. They're now homeowners and they're gonna be close to the beach. It's everything they ever dreamed of. Uh, but it's, you know, for selfish reasons, I'm, I'm just sad that they'll, they'll no longer be close to me. But uh, as a sort of perhaps a goodbye gift, I'm not exactly sure, but he basically they had to pack up all their crap and uh, he was like, hey, you want this record? And I'm like, well, yeah, I want this record. And uh, so anyway, I, I, I met up with him and it was kind of a bittersweet goodbye, but he gave me the wedding album box set from John and Yoko. And I, I guess I had never really heard of this or at least I wasn't completely aware of it, but yeah, so basically, it, it, it's a, it's a single album. Uh, it comes in this box, which has a reprint of their, <laughs> of their marriage license. It has a bunch of feelies. Now, unfortunately, I don't have all of the feelies, but I have most of them. Uh, here is the bagism, which features a picture of their wedding cake. And then it also has this, uh, this insert hand-drawn by John. And it's got more images on this side, some photos. And then it's got the wedding itself. Now this is a poster. So it's got, jeez, uh, oh, this thing's so big. It's got images and I'm ripping it already. It's got images of, of their wedding. And then and on this side, it's got uh, images of uh, their wedding, plus it's got uh, stuff of their, their sit-in or their bed-in, and I'll get to that in a moment. And then it's got uh, this booklet about all the press that they got. So it's got a lot of uh, newspaper clippings in here and uh, satirical cartoons. Really fascinating stuff. Gives you a window of what, what it was like for them back in 1969 when this record came out. And this is really an experimental piece. I don't think it was, it was never meant to be a hit record. It was just something that they wanted to do, which leads me to the music. The record itself came in its own gatefold sleeve. You get a lovely picture of them kissing. On the inside, you get a great panoramic shot. And then you get another photo, a color photo of them doing the same thing. The music, <laughs> The music is hilarious. This is uh, side one. This is simply titled John and Yoko. And it's it's literally that. It's John yelling Yoko's name and Yoko yelling John's name over recorded heartbeats. They're actual heartbeats recorded as the drum beat. And it's uh, 22 minutes and 23 seconds of that. Just different ways of saying John and Yoko, sometimes lovingly, sometimes yelling. Uh, it's quite hilarious if you make it all the way through. And on this side, we have Amsterdam, which is 24 minutes and 52 seconds. And it's basically a recording of that protest that you saw. They sort of explain why they're doing it. And then there's some singing and there's probably a reason why it hasn't ever really been reissued to my knowledge. Uh, but yeah, if you're a John Lennon fan, I think it's kind of a must own. Up next, we have Chasing Deer with their debut album titled Hands On from 2018, and this is self-released by them. Now, Chasing Deer are a big fan of the show, which I'm very flattered, and they reached out to me, wanted to send me their record, and I was very honored. And to boot, they're a really good band. I was very impressed. They're out, they're out of the UK, and what's interesting is that their drummer, has a family member who's deaf. And so they really make an effort to reach out to the deaf community, hence why we have a picture of a hand here. And then down below, you have pictures of all the song titles done in British Sign Language, which I think is fantastic. Now, when it comes to the music, I kind of liken them to stuff that was coming out in, say, the, the late 90s, early 2000s, mid 2000s. So bands like The Killers, Franz Ferdinand, The Faint, they kind of really imbue that sound with their music. And they have a guitar, which is fantastic. I love that sound. This came in a, a black paper sleeve. Here is 
Here is side A and there is side B. So yeah, Chasing Deer, fantastic band, great record. Highly encourage you guys to check it out and thank you guys, Chasing Deer, for sending this along. Up next is a childhood favorite of mine. This is Traffic with their fourth studio album titled John Barleycorn Must Die from 1970 on United Artists Records. Wow, this record, ah, this was like visiting an old friend when I put it on. It was just, I hadn't heard it in years, and immediately it just brought me back to my childhood with my dad playing me this record. And, and, he, and, and he really tried to instill on me just the power of lyrics and just the, the whimsy of writing a song like John Barleycorn Must Die. He just, he loved this album and he would share it with any of my friends. He just, he, he loved to do that. Opening up, you get a nice shot of the band and the back there, get the uh, track listings and whatnot. Now this is definitely in the vein of say, you know, that late 60s, early 70s folk rock feel. It's got some fantastic sax on here and I'll show you the record itself. I still have it in the original paper sleeve because I still need to clean this record, but here we go. Here is side one and there is side two. So yeah, John Barleycorn Must Die. Ah, just a great album and I'm so happy to finally have this in my collection on vinyl. Now this next record was a shot in the dark. This is Buddy Mills with Them Changes from 1970 on Mercury Records. I believe this is his debut album. I can't totally be certain, but so Buddy Mills, if you don't know who he is, he is kind of a well-known drummer. He played with Hendrix and Band of Gypsies, played with Santana, and made his own career as a solo artist. And this record is just Oh my God, it blew me away. I'm so glad I picked this up. It's got a real, uh, you know, late 60s soul meets 60s rock feel about it. Just a great blend of both of those flavors. Uh, and he's got some fantastic session musicians, as you can see here. Look at that, three guitars, a bunch of horns, keyboards, piano, and of course him on the drums. Just a great album. If you haven't heard it, you gotta do yourself a favor and check this out. On the back there, you get credits. Let's see the vinyl. This is another one I still need to clean. I think I got it in the original paper sleeve there. All right, so this is side one, and here is side two. Interesting enough, Buddy Mills ended up doing the vocals for the California Raisins commercials, if you guys remember that. So a little bit of trivia for you. So up next, I have a fiber. This is on Correspect Records. And oh my gosh, ah, this was a fantastic future funk release. I don't remember when the album was originally released, but this version on vinyl came out in 2018. Now I'll be honest, I wasn't sure what to make of Fiber when I first heard the music online. I don't know, something about it didn't captivate me, but I'm so glad I ended up buying it on vinyl because it just sounds fantastic. I've already listened to this twice and maybe it's just something about it being on wax just makes that little bit of difference, but I really, really enjoyed this. This also has two extra bonus tracks and a remix. Highly encourage you guys, check out this release. Be sure to check out Correspect on Bandcamp. This next record was a complete surprise. This is the original motion picture score of Beverly Hills Cop. I have the original motion picture soundtrack, which features two songs by Harold Faltermeyer. I think it's two songs, it might be a little bit more, but it's also got uh, more of the, uh, you know, the pop hits on there from the Pointer Sisters, etc. But it was so cool to hear a lot of these incidental tracks. Now, keep in mind the Axel F theme, which is, you know, basically the quintessential Beverly Hills Cop theme plays about nine times on here in various different forms. And so that can get a little repetitive. Also, some of these tracks are just short incidental pieces. They kind of cut off abruptly and that's because they're in service of the film, not necessarily for an album. So just keep that in mind if you're diving into this for the first time. But I think fans of Beverly Hills Cop, you're gonna really, really enjoy this like I did. It was so cool to hear all these songs isolated. This came out, this was done by Enjoy The Ride Records. They've done some other uh, vinyl soundtracks like The Dark Crystal, kind of a nice deep purple magenta with a blacks kind of, 
I don't know, looks looks sort of nebulous. <laughs> Goes well with the labels, I think. There is side A and there is side B with a great picture of Eddie Murphy. All right, so the next six records are all from King Gizzard. Uh, now, if you guys are fans of King Gizzard, you will know that 2018 marked the first time their first five releases have been repressed officially. So this was kind of a big deal. Uh, so we're gonna start with their very first release. This is the Willoughby's Beach EP. And the cover art on here is fantastic. It's got spot varnishing with a relief right here. Just gorgeous on the back there. Again, the same thing, spot varnishing with a relief. It also came with a insert here, kind of a handwritten photocopied thing and a nice picture of the band. Now, all of these releases, which I really like, don't feature any barcodes. The barcodes are actually on the outer sleeve here. So there's the barcode sticker. It also has a hype sticker here. And all of these records were not shrink wrapped. They were actually put in these reusable outer sleeves, which I think is fantastic. I wish more record labels would do that because shrink wrap just seems, while it's nice to open it up and it keeps the record protected, it just, it just feels kind of wasteful in the end. And it's on 12 inch 45 RPM vinyl for the first time. And it comes on this red, very red, cherry red color. There's side one and there's side two. Love those uh, electric green labels too. Music wise, I was kind of surprised to hear how um, sort of raw, kind of unpolished uh, surf rock, garage rock inspired their sound was. It's, it's I, I mean, I shouldn't say I'm surprised, but uh, for a first release, it is really good, but it's it's not what they, they've become now. Uh, they've definitely morphed and changed since 2011, but still, great release. I really enjoyed it. It's a little on the short side, but that's because it's an EP. Moving on, we have 12 Bar Brews. This is their first full length and this was originally released in September of 2012. It's got reimagined artwork by Jason Galea and just, just gorgeous. I love this. I guess it's a King Lizard guy <laughs> with a sword. It's, it's a little bit different from the original release, which I think is good. It helps to separate it when you're out there in the wild. And on the back there, really like how they incorporated all the track names into the castle and whatnot. This also comes with an insert get more of that kind of photocopy, handmade uh, lyrics and whatnot. And then love this picture of the band with this more great artwork surrounding. This is on a, a green vinyl, very much in contrast to the, the first release I showed you. And there is side two. So 12 Bar Brews, a uh, little bit more refined, but still on more of that raw, kind of uh, unfiltered King Gizzard, a uh, lot of reverb. Really enjoyed this record. Fantastic first release. Highly recommend you guys pick this one up. Next up, we have I Like the Sky from 2013 with uh, reimagined artwork by Jason Galea again. Now this one is a little different because it's a story narrated by Broderick Smith. This guy wrote and narrates it and King Gizzard basically does kind of a spaghetti Western inspired music. I say conceptually, I get where they were going. I just feel like execution wise, it's just not that interesting. The music is definitely in service of the story and the story I don't find very compelling. Uh, but that could be just cause I, I haven't really let it soak in and, and maybe I was expecting something different. But as of right now, this was my least favorite of the five reissues. On the back there, you get some lovely lettering. On the inside here, you get a great little insert and you get a transcript of the whole story. So, you know, you can read along. It's on orange vinyl. Here is side one and there is side two. Up next, I have Float Along, Fill Your Lungs. This is their third album released, I believe in 2014. This was definitely my favorite out of the bunch. Really like this album. This was more how I, I think of King Gizzard in today's terms. This came with a full color insert with credits and thank yous and lyrics on this side. Also came with a, an amazing poster. I gotta show you guys this. Love this artwork. Look at those lungs. And then you get a great psychedelic picture of the band. Show you guys the record itself. Comes on this very lovely banana yellow vinyl. This is side one. 
and there is a side two. I would say if you're only gonna buy one of these reissues out of their back catalog, this is the one you're gonna wanna pick up. I think you're gonna be the most happy with this one. Last up, we have Oddments from uh, 2014. Uh, they call this an album, they call it the fourth studio album. However, I kind of look at it as a compilation album just because it features songs from dating all the way back to 2007 up to 2014. So it's quite a range of music and it, it doesn't all quite go together, in, at least in my opinion. This one was kind of hit or miss for me, I would say. Opening it up, you get a lot, lot more of that, just fantastic detail. And on the back there, you get the, the track titles. And it came in a inner sleeve with thank yous and credits and then uh, just the lyrics on this side. Show you guys the vinyl. This comes on really nice purple color. Here is side one and there is side two. I'm so, so on this record. It's not bad, but it's also not fantastic. It's, it's sort of in the middle there for me. So the last record I got was Nautagon Infinity. Oh, it's a fantastic record. It was a pick of the week. I gave away that copy, so I didn't have a copy myself. So I thought, I, you know, I'll save on shipping. I'll bundle this in with the other five albums. And ah, just, I, I, I've been so busy, I haven't even opened this yet. So, uh, but if you've seen that pick of the week, you know all about this record. But uh, to recap, it's basically a nine-sided shape. Infinity meaning the last song blends seamlessly into the first song. So it becomes an infinite loop. On vinyl, it doesn't quite work that way. They have to fade out between the two sides. But regardless, it, it's just a fantastic record. Hits you hard and just does not let up. Ah, love this, adore it. It's, it's my favorite King Gizzard album. And uh, so happy to finally have it on vinyl. All right, everybody, that will do it for this time around. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to leave me a comment down below. Let me know which of these releases were your favorite. And if you've ever listened to the wedding album all the way through, I really want to know. Until then, I am your Vinyl Geek, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Hey everyone, thanks again for checking out this episode of Awesome Finds. Now, if you want to see more, I put a playlist right there, as well as a video that YouTube will choose for me. I put out new videos every Tuesday and sometimes Friday, so if you like what you see, be sure to hit subscribe.